Okay, so in this video we are going to talk about the neural control of horizontal conjugate gaze. And what exactly does that mean? It basically just means how does the brain control the way that we look to the left and to the right. Now, in order to understand this, we have to first define a few key terms. And the first term I'd like to define is a term known as a saccade. And these are basically quick um, darting eye movements. Darting eye movements. Uh, where we try and acquire a target in our visual field. And most of our eye movements are this, in fact, in which we look to an object, focus on it very quickly, and then look back to another object. And those are done by very quick, fast eye movements. The second term is known as a uh, is known as PPRF, and that just stands for paramedian pontine reticular formation. And the PPRF is uh, nothing more than a collection of neurons within the pons, aka the pontine uh, region of the brainstem, that helps control eye movement function. The third term is known as abducens, and abducens is just the the uh, uh, alternative term for the sixth nerve uh, and its corresponding nuclei. And this is important because it controls one of the eye muscles involved in uh, horizontal gaze. The fourth term is known as the oculomotor, uh, uh, and that's also known as the third nerve, uh, third cranial nerve and nuclei. And again, this is another um, important uh, uh, nerve and nuclei that are involved in horizontal gaze. Uh, and the final term that I like to define is something known as the MLF, which is short for medial longitudinal fasciculus. And this is basically the wiring that helps connect all of this stuff together to allow us to um, engage in horizontal conjugate uh, eye movement. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about the muscles of the eye before we dive into the circuitry of all this. And the two I'm most concerned about are going to be the lateral rectus and the medial rectus. The rest of these uh, muscles of the eye are actually not particularly important for horizontal conjugate movement, but are more important for looking up or down or intorting or extorting the eye. So we're not going to focus too much on these last four. But the lateral rectus muscle uh, basically allows the eye to uh, move outwards uh, or look kind of towards the temporal part uh, of the face, um, and that is known as abduction of the eye. Okay, and that's controlled by the abducens. Uh, nerve and nuclei, okay? Whereas the medial rectus muscle allows the eye to look in towards the nose, and that is known as a deduction or adduction, and that's controlled by the oculomotor nerve and nuclei, which we talked about on the previous page. Again, I'm not going to get into the rest of these muscles because they're not very important to what we're talking about in this video. Now, let's talk about the circuitry of how all this stuff is hooked up. Now, in order to look to the left or to the right, the brain has to send a signal to the brainstem in order to cause that to happen. And that begins in an area known as the frontal eye fields. And I drew it this way because what I want you to realize is that there is obviously a laterality to all of this stuff. So if we look here, we're looking at the right eye and the left eye. I kind of want you to imagine that these are your eyes and we're focusing on whether or not we're looking to the, in this case, we're looking to the right Okay, now a signal starts out in the left frontal eye field in the brain, and that signal is going to travel to across to the opposite side to the paramedi paramedian pontine reticular formation on the right side. Okay, now this nucleus is going to coordinate the actions of the abducens nuclei and the ocular motor nuclei. So this is going to uh, connect to the abducens nuclei. And, the, and this connection, or this information, is going to now travel via the sixth cranial nerve, or the abducens uh, nerve, to the lateral rectus muscle, which is going to allow the right eye to abduct, or look outwards towards the right side. Okay, so that all makes sense. So now how do we get the left eye to also look to the right, or look in towards the nose, um, and that is accomplished via a connection from the abducens nuclei and the uh, PPRF to the oculomotor nuclei. And that connection is the MLF, or the medial longitudinal fasciculus. 
Okay? Now, once that information makes it to the ocular motor nuclei, this uh, nerve via the uh, third cranial nerve, the ocular motor nerve, is going to make a connection to the medial rectus muscle, okay, rectus, and that is going to allow the left eye to adduct or adduct, which means look towards the right or look towards the nose. Now, again, this circuitry is set up for looking to the right, and you can imagine everything is just flip-flopped if we're looking the other, dire other direction to the left. Now, let's talk about a couple of diseases to illustrate and kind of drive home this whole, whole idea of what's going on. So we'll start off by talking about seizures. And so seizures, if they originate in the frontal lobes, can cause eye deviation um, to the contralateral side. And why does that make sense? Because if we have a seizure that starts off in the left frontal lobe, it's going to activate the frontal eye fields of that lobe, which is going to send a, a it's going to send information to the PPRF on the right, to the abducens nuclei on the right, which is going to cause the right lateral rectus to look to the right, and the left via the MLF uh, eye to look to the right as well via the medial rectus muscle. So that's why in a seizure, uh, we can sometimes localize where seizures are happening based on what the eyes are doing. So if the eyes are moving to the right, it means the seizure focus may be in the left frontal lobe, specifically around the area of the left frontal eye field. And vice versa, if the seizure is happening on the right side, you'd expect the eyes to move to the left. Okay, So that's kind of a way to work through the circuitry using a disease process to understand it a little better. And the second thing I'd like to talk about, because it's frequently seen, and is relatively uh, common disorder is multiple sclerosis. Now, multiple sclerosis is an inflammatory condition uh, that uh, involves uh, destruction of the fibers, fibers that compose the MLF. All right. So let's go back to our diagram here now. Uh, if the MLF is damaged, as it is sometimes in multiple sclerosis, what happens is that this part of the circuitry from the frontal eye fields to the PPRF back to the abducens nuclei is intact. So in somebody with multiple sclerosis with damage to their MLF is trying to look to the right, their right eye can look to the right because this part of the pathway, this first part of the pathway, is still working. So that right eye will look to the right, but the problem is, is now this information cannot make it to the ocular motor nuclei, so the left eye stays in place. So you get this weird situation where the right eye, you ask somebody to look to the right, and the right eye will move to the right, but the left eye will stay looking straight ahead. And that is what's known as an INO, or an internuclear, internuclear ophthalmoplegia, which basically means the eye is paresed are not able to move. And so that's sometimes a common thing you, you may see uh, uh, in multiple sclerosis. So I hope this video has been useful in discussing uh, horizontal conjugate gaze, or basically how the brain controls the way that we look to the left or to the right.